All right, welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With. And today our with is Dr. Darren Cannell, uh, coming to us from Saskatchewan, Canada. So, Darren, to get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, um, I always ex I always introduce myself as a phys ed teacher who taught art who ended up building a cyber school. That's basically my history. <laughs> and once I got into the cyber school, obviously, I did uh, my master's and my PhD in, uh, in online learning. And so that's where I got the doctor title from. And uh, since then, I have retired. I'm not in the educational system so much anymore. I'm in my own private educational system. I now run the uh, Canadian Elite Academy, which is uh, we teach skills in basketball, volleyball, and in art. So. All right. So during your time at the cyber school, you would have trained a lot of teachers coming to you um, that would be teaching online and designing online content and curating online resources. Um, obviously, the folks that were being thrown into this now um, don't have probably the kind of time that you would normally devote to the teachers during the cyber school. But based upon the experiences you've had with that, are there a, a couple of tips that you'd give them as to how to approach the next couple of months? For, for the teachers? For the teachers. Um, yeah, okay. So for the teachers, my, my first suggestion would be to never, ever forget that they're the reason why their class is successful or not successful. And so the moment they remove themselves from the equation and think that technology or any content is going to be able to replace them, that's not going to happen. So they need to build relationships, they need to communicate, and they need to worry about that more than anything else. The content it itself exists. It's out there. So they get, they'll be able to find that, but their communication tools have to be very good. So this, uh, the Zoom network, the, uh, the different communication tools, Google Hangouts, Facebook Live, any, any tools that you can find that allow you to communicate back and forth uh, through chat or through uh, your phone system, calling people on the phone which people ignore all the time a phone call actually to a student is not a bad idea just to touch base with them to find out how they're going they actually both people know how to use it really well and i know teachers are really good at using phones so they can communicate back and forth the idea is that you don't have to learn a lot of technology in order to be a good online teacher you just have to find the tools that you're comfortable with one that you can explain to the students how to use and then you can communicate back and forth and if you can build that relationship the educational world will be fine We'll have no problems. But that's, the, in my mind, is the most important thing. The other thing is try not to duplicate your face-to-face -face classroom online. That's a waste of energy. Uh, there's so many other things that can be done effectively using the technology. And so to have that uh, video set up and then to have a kid sit there and watch you for an hour like they would in a normal classroom is just trying to recreate the old and bringing it into what we have the opportunity here to build something that's new and much more effective when it comes to the education of the students that we have today. So, Okay. Now, folks may not remember this, but it was a long time ago. I followed you on your trip around the world and would post all <laughs> of your updates. Um, so and for those that are new to the blog, you may not know this, but Darren took a trip around the world throughout one school year while uh, he was, I think, still running the cyber school at the time, and obviously you were you were homeschooling your son through a well, not really homeschooling. You were schooling your son as you were going around on yeah. this trip. So you have a fair amount of experience at you know how to um, essentially support uh, your own child's education as they're doing things in a remote setting, which a lot of parents are finding themselves in right now. Um, you know, they're always partners in the process, but not to the extent that they are right now. So are there any tips that you'd provide to them uh, on the experience? After, after teaching for 31 years and teaching phys ed, art, uh, building cyber school and building all sorts of courses and doing all that type of stuff, the hardest person I've ever had to teach is my son. <laughs> and so I feel for the parents. Um, I think they have to continue to have the role as a parent and continue to be the parent and do what parents do. To switch the hat and put on the teacher's hat is so difficult for both my son, my, my son, my wife, and myself when we were traveling. We did teach him and did the homeschooling thing. We did, we did the core subjects for sure. And then we did the world, the, the different places we were at. We did a lot of that kind of stuff and communicated back and forth. It was so frustrating. 
And so I feel for the parents who feel that they it now has fallen suddenly fallen into their lap and this is what they need to do. I think that they need to make sure that they encourage their, their offspring. They get them to do the work. They give them a time and a location and the technology that they need in order to be effective. But the actual teaching of the material, I think they should leave that to the teachers. Now, when I say leave it to the teachers, it's not necessarily just the teacher that sits in front of you, like we would here where I'm sitting and I'm talking to you. If, if you want to know anything about how to be a parent of an online student, there's so many videos and material that's already out there that would show the parents how to do that. And so to recreate a lot of the material and to be the teacher is not necessary. And you, all you have to do is watch any child who has the technology in front of them and watch the way they interact with it and watch the way they consume the information that is there. All the information they need is there. All we need to do is encourage them to go find it. And so right away you'll get the, I don't understand it. And you have to say, well, you have to take the time. Just like if you're learning a video game, you have to put the time in in order to get better at it. And so I don't know how to do this math equation. What they would do in a classroom is you have the teacher standing right there in the help. The parent should not feel that they have to stand in front of them and try to figure out the equation. Like it's always nice to sit beside them and work on that type of stuff. That's a nice family building thing. But it's also the most frustrating thing in the world. And there was times where my son, I didn't think was going to make it because you get so frustrated with them and then you don't understand it. They don't understand it. It's so frustrating. And but this math makes sense. This math doesn't make sense. And it's that is and all this stuff. That's not your job. As a parent, your job is to encourage them to go find the material and then be the explorer with them to go find the information that is out there. And then learn it together is a great thing. But to take on the role as a teacher, oh, for goodness sakes. It would be like me trying to teach a, a subject that I'm not good at and ask a teacher how frustrated they are when they're in an elementary school and suddenly, oh, guess what? This year you're teaching social studies, but I'm a phys ed teacher. That frustration is the same thing that is happening. Every single parent in the world at the moment is because what do you mean I have to teach this? Or what do you mean I have to homeschool my student, so my child? You don't have to. The schools are still there. They're still there to be supportive and they're still trying to do their best. You have to be patient with the teachers to let them get up to speed. Some of you will be very lucky and I'll have with the teachers who have been involved in that world for years and they'll just move into that role without any problems at all. There'll be other teachers that won't. And so as a parent, be a parent. Let the teachers be teachers. All right. Thank you very much, Darren. This has been another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learn today with Dr. Darren Cano. Thank you very much. <laughs>